it looks like all of you have kits. Is that correct? You're all the people who got the kit. So you have the, the, in, the instructions and the, um, and the helpful information and planning. I'm, um, I'm kind of a um, overdo it person. I'd rather give more information than not enough. But on this call, I'm not going to be able, obviously, to, to go over every single thing because we want to focus on the actual making so that if you have any questions or problems, we have plenty of time to address that. Uh, if at the end, um, we, if we have time, uh, we'll have questions and answer period. You can also um, uh, make a note to, you can email me with questions. Um, it's best to email. Um, I, I just have a lot going on, so I'm difficult to reach. Um, but if after this, like you go to do, make something again and you have a question, just um, email me at artsmisspgh at gmail.com. Um, and I will follow up with you. Um, so um, you have all of your materials. Um, if you look at the screen, I'm gonna, Trisha, are you there to switch over to the, to the making screen so that, okay. So I can still, can everyone still hear me and everything's still good? I'm good, okay. Um, so um, Jen, I'm Kate McGrady and I am um, the executive director of the Artsmiths, um, which is lo now located in Carnegie. We are a nonprofit uh, art education organization. And uh, eventually you will have access to the video for this class from today, um, as well as uh, we'll be editing and making a video that goes with all of our kits. This is the first kit that we're doing. Um, Trish and I are friends, so I said I would do it with Handmade Arcade. Um, obviously, you don't need the kit in the future to make things. You can just buy the wool. You now have a pad and you have needles and you have some concept of what you're doing. So uh, you don't need to really buy kits if you would want to uh, when we have other kits available so that you get those instructions. Because there are, there are many ways to make things. I didn't really go over all of them. This is a pretty simple, uh, simple idea, simple concept. Um, you can make things with wire amateurs underneath them. You can obviously make bigger things. You can make things that are more um, realistic. You know, you can spend the time to like, obviously a raccoon um, has really an, a longer snout um, and obviously it doesn't, he doesn't have any hands, <laughs> his arms and his hands, but he's really cute. So this is the cute version of a raccoon, a needle felted raccoon. But there are people out there who spend a lot of time on individual items to make them look like they're real. You know, whatever, whatever they're making looks real. Um, this looks real enough and cute enough for, for me. So that's what, why we're going to do this one. Um, so the first thing, um, I'm going to set him. It's kind of hard to show him to you. I'm going to set him down. So. I'll lift him up and show him to you when we when we get further into things. So I, I gave you three kinds of wool. Um, so we're going to start with the white. Um, you would, I did sort of separate them. So um, you have like a, a larger bunch, a smaller bunch and a really small bunch. The larger bunch is for the body. And that's the part that we're going to do that's under that's underneath him, his insides. Some people make them where the insides are not made out of wool. I've tried that. I don't think that's the way the cheap ones that look like they just tend to not. I don't know that when you cover, try to cover that cheap stuff, it's like a it's like that foam that, in, that you put inside pillows or something. I don't like that. I'd rather use the wool. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and we're going to make the, um, the first uh, part is the, just the body here, and then the head, and then the snout. So we're going to start with this bunch, this large bunch. And uh, it, it is better to, it's nice that it has these um, 
it's all feathery and it doesn't have, it's not cut or it's not, you know, uh, hard cut in any way that makes it better when you're felting it. The other thing that's really important is to make sure it doesn't have any, you know, pieces of anything in it because the wool sometimes when you order it, I mean, the farmers, they're not necessarily all as, um, as neat as we are. So they leave like little pieces of things in them. And they also, um, sometimes the yarn smells, which is a weird thing. I hadn't run into that, but I recently did. And you can um, wash the wool with dish detergent. You wanna just be careful that you don't felt it when you wash it. You just like let it sit in a bowl of water with some dish detergent and then rinse it you can keep rinsing it, but don't manipulate it too much. Just keep rinsing it with this till you get everything out of it and then let it dry. So for, for the body, um, so we have this piece and what we want it to do in the end is to make a cone shape. And that cone shape is about an inch, let me put it in the directions. See, one and a half times the size of what you want to finish is kind of what you're working with making this tube. And um, so we want ours to be about two inches. And what I like to do for all of my things, what I find that works really well is this like rolling technique, like a carpet, where you lay it down and then take the ends and roll it not you know it doesn't have to be crazy tight you know but you're rolling it tightly to make that shape and have it have the density inside that you are going to want in your finished product without having to do all the needle felting to make that happen so if you see here i'm creating this I'm pushing some of the sides in. It's about two inches wide. Um, so I'm pushing those, the top and the bottom, kind of gathering them in as I roll this to make this little like two inch tube. And I, I'm going to make this the top. So I'm going to put a push it over so that it's maybe a little fatter on the bottom. Um, so, and you can see the wool already like kind of sticks to itself. So does everyone understand that step? Um, so the amount of wool that you use is obviously something you kind of figure out along the way. Um, when you uh, first start, you're not sure how much wool you need for what size, you know, or exactly what size your finished product is gonna be. Um, if you make this too big, you can always kind of, and like I was saying, it's, it's nice that it's, you can always just pull off kind of the way you rolled it, because you haven't done anything to needle felt it yet. So, and if you make it, to um, if, if it's too thin or too small, you can just pick up another piece, you know, wherever it needs to go and just add it, you know, add it on to wherever you need it to be. And then also remember that this space in this particular project, you know, it'd be different if it wasn't the raccoon, but the raccoon is also gonna get this gray covering. So we're also going to add some wool um, when we do his like coat, basically like we're going to put on his coat. Um, so uh, we've got our, our starting point. Okay, then we pick up our needle. And you, if you got a kit, um, there are so many different people out there that are making a needle felting things. Um, you need to just figure out what is the kit, the, the needle that you like. How do you like to work with a needle once you get started? Um, the, these ones, um, and there's lots of different companies that have this kind where this piece that goes in here is fatter at the top than the bottom. So when you put it, um, when you put your needle on it, you're gonna put your needle in this little groove here 
And these needles, you can purchase them. Um, they come in bulk, like you can buy tubes of them, you can buy different sizes. Uh, our kit contains two different sizes. And the sizes, I say they're um, 40, they're, they're gauges. So um, the larger the gauge of the needle, um, the bigger the hole. Uh, or it's the other way around. It's just like gauge. So the larger the number, the smaller the piece is. The smaller the gauge, the large the, the it's uh, the width. The thicker it is, and the needle that you use is going to make you know either um, you'll see and like when we start doing not not necessarily a large hole or you know but the bigger the the gauge. The smaller the gauge, the wider the needle, then the that's like a rougher, it's gonna make like a rougher felting. And these needles have, if you were to take your finger and just slightly run your nail on the side of this, they have little barbs in them. And that's the difference between a felting needle and a regular needle. Although I imagine it might, it would be possible to felt with a regular needle. These barbs, they really are the, the, they do the trick. They're the one, they're the thing that pulls that yarn into itself. And wool, um, you could felt with anything that's a natural fiber. Uh, natural fibers, I don't know if, if any of you have seen like other kinds of felting where people knit things out of felt and then they wash them in hot water, or they do wet felting uh, where they, put things on a table and um, with, with hot water and pound them and needle them together. The thing is that uh, natural fibers are a hair. And since they're a hair, they have follicles on them. And those follicles open up from heat or manipulation. And when we do this, uh, the needle is going to uh, to push those follicles together to felt. Um, I'm gonna take a, just a little break. Is anybody like have any questions, anything? This isn't like as fun as I would hope it would be like if you were here in person. <laughs> we could be chatting and relaxed and usually my classes last, they take longer than this. So I'm a little bit, um, not stressed isn't the word, but I'm tr I'd, I'd rather get to the end and know that you've learned everything you need to learn than run out of time. Um, so I'm going to put my needle, that thin side of my needle, into this tool. I push it down tight so that I'm going to stab. This is you know, start the stabbing. That it's it's the the thinner end is at the bottom, and the the thicker side is at the top. And the needle is sticking out here and it's tight in this tool. Has everyone got that? Wait, sorry, I didn't get it. Okay, so the needles come, these, this little tool, this little tool comes with the, these um, things that go inside of it. It's, it's a con, there's, there's plastic ones and all different kinds. This one happens to be made out of wood. And so you take the needle that and we're going to use the, um, of the two needles, we're going to use the wider of the needle, which in your case came inside of this wooden. It's the one thing, if you got a kit, it came inside of it. So you put it, put it so that the, the bent end is underneath here. Uh, on the thin side of this, and it sits in this groove. Oh, okay, I got you now. And then we just, if you hold it in place while you push it inside of this tool, uh, it will hold the needle in place and um, and should be stiff. Now that is one way, one method, this is another needle that we provided. Um, this needle, um, if, if, if you don't feel really comfortable, 
I find that sometimes when I'm working with something that's big like this, that it's, it's just a little too big for something small like this. And one of the things that um, you do when you do this is um, most people, I think, um, or unless it's just me, <laughs> stab yourself <laughs> by accident. So I, um, you know, I'm, this isn't my preferred method, this big thing, but this is the way a lot of people do their work. And so, you know, if, if this makes you comfortable, you can use this and we, we can do that for today. Um, you can also just use this, uh, the, the needle without the wooden thing. You know, there's all you're using to felt is this one inch at the end of it. So you don't need to have this handle. It's just a way to make a tool for you. And then some things also like some kits come with um, the needle looks like this, which is just gives you something to hold on to this rubber at the top and then the, the needle at the bottom. So there's different tools that you can, you know, decide uh, the size and the type of tool that is most comfortable for you. The other thing are these like finger guards and you got a finger guard. I don't like finger guards, um, but that, you know, I provided them because you, you may, may keep you from stabbing yourself. Um, that's gonna go on your left hand, which is the hand that is the likely to get stabbed by accident. You know, you poke through here, that's what the, where, the, where the risk is, is on that finger that's underneath holding this. Um, so a finger guard and they make different kinds of finger guards um they some of them are rubber this this one is leather um whatever you know you're comfortable with i i gave you the leather one you can work whatever with whatever works for you um the other uh the other uh the, well the next step i guess is that okay so we're gonna we're gonna do some felting and there's two ways um, to do your felting. Um, there's probably more than two, but these are the two basic ones that I, that I have come across. Um, when you hold, um, you can hold your, your piece in your hand and do the, do the felting. I'll use the tool that you guys are using. And, and, I'll, and we'll talk about that. But also you can use the, um, instead of holding it in your hand, you can use the pad underneath you as a um, as a way to hold the the piece that you're working on. I find that the pad works really well for small items, like when we do the ears and the eyes, and we and we are working with a small piece of wool and we're trying to get it in the shape that we want. I find that the pad works best to do that. So let's um, take in our left hand, let's take the, um, the piece that we have, uh, the body piece, and we're going to, if you just start poking it, what you should feel is kind of those barbs. You can kind of feel that little catching of the little barbs um, inside of the, of the felt, of the wool that hasn't become felt yet. Now I like to, what I've learned that also makes it go faster is the idea is to kind of catch them and push them. And if you can see real, I'm trying to hold this in a way that you can, if I, if I do this, I can kind of pull these little loose hairs and push them to get them to do what I want them to do. So, um, so that's um, how we're going to start. Now, I, if, if I don't, I apologize if that I work better with this smaller needle. So I'm, I'm going to use this smaller needle to do this and, and keep myself from stabbing myself. Um, but what we're going to do is sit here and manipulate this. Just keep poking our little ball, going, turning it in and around. That's another reason I like to hold it in my hand and turning it around and pushing down the fibers till they are starting to join one another. 
And you can see how if we, if we pull this over, you see this point in the middle, just like an example of how we're just tucking this continually into itself. And we can do that on the sides. Uh, we need to do that on the sides, but um, just pushing it down and it should, uh, as we are turning it and manipulating it, it should be getting smaller in our hands. It's starting to um, felt into itself and, um, and starting to stick, stick everything sticks together. So if, if at this point, if somehow you needed to take something out of here, like if you were like, oh, I made a mistake or I need a, it, it's ha much harder after you've started felting it because it really is all starting to stick together. So just is anyone having any trouble with at least it starting to do what you want it to do? Just do you find that it's that it's starting to make its shape and you're getting the, the gist of like getting it started? Good. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you doing it from the top as well? Because yours looks a bit shorter than mine. <laughs> yeah, so the um the this is not two inches yet so i'm still gonna felt it more i just want to stop to make sure that we have you know don't have any questions um as we can see um from this it's still too big and it's still too um it's not narrow at the top so i'm gonna just let you i'm gonna stop talking and give us a couple minutes to um to get it to be tighter and try to make that cone shape the, long, the, the thing about needle felting is that the shapes take shape over time. You know, you keep felting it until you get it in the shape, in the, in the shape that you want it to be in. Um, so the top and the bottom, um, the top doesn't necessarily have to be, it, you know, it is a cone. It doesn't have to be flat on the top necessarily, but you do want the bottom to be flat because that we're gonna, this, is, this little guy's gonna stand up. I mean, that's his, he, you could hang, he could be an ornament. You could hang him up and hang him on a tree, um, but his, uh, he, there, he's meant to be able to sit, um, to sit up. So I'm just gonna keep on hunching this. Okay, for the sake of time, the other thing that you can do is kind of, now that he's getting felted, is kind of squeeze him. I'm trying to make sure that we can finish in the time we have. So give him some squeezes to get him more in that two inch size. Uh, he's probably not gonna be, um, one of the things about this is that the longer you do this, the tighter the felting. And I could do this longer and I could also um, use, um, use a smaller, even smaller needle and I could really, really make this felt really, really tight, but we don't really have time for that. Um, once you start to do it more, um, you'll decide how much time you wanna spend on something. Like what, to do a re, the realistic ones, they really, really are tight. They just keep felting them and keep squeezing and felting them until they're super tight. And then add more wool if they need to add dimensions. But we're gonna take this guy and he's gonna end up being probably bigger than my, the one that I have here, but we're gonna move on to the next step um, for the sake of time. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this wool that we have for the head, which is the next, um, the next part of our, of our piece. Um, and we're going to roll that into a ball with our hands. Just going to roll that piece into a ball. 
And then we're gonna start felting that. And just keep pulling it from the edges where those edges are, wherever you see like these pieces sticking out. Just keep pulling those in here. And we can keep making him, just keep making him into a ball. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can pull the yarn, kind of um, pull the, the wool so that there's like a place where you're kind of pushing all of the ends to. And this would, could be the bottom of the head. So we just keep pulling those pieces Pull them with the, the needle, then push them in. Pull them, pull the edges and push them into the middle. And my head's pretty round, but it needs a little bit tighter. He's starting. Take a look at put him um put the head on the top of your raccoon, your body, and see if it's starting to look proportional. Does anyone have a, any problems that is it too big or too small? Yeah. Um one of the things that if you fall behind. Like if, if we're going to keep moving, but if you fall behind, you can set this down and you can make the pieces that were the rest of the, the face and the rest of the pieces. Um, if you want to take a break because you're not getting it to the point that you want it to be, remember that the video is going to be available to you. So you'll be able to watch this again fast forward to the part that you need to know about. Um, you won't have to keep up per se, because uh, I think that this is pretty, uh, a lot to, to be able to do this as a beginner um, and make it look exactly the way you want it to the first time, if we do it this fast, uh, might be tricky for you. So um, I'm going to uh, move on with mine with that because the head is proportional it's going to be larger because i haven't spent the time to get it felted the way i wanted to um but i'm going to move forward and then you guys can decide um how you want to use your time you know you can keep doing what you're doing and then watch the video later um to finish or you can uh set things aside and and uh, continue or try to set things aside and continue because the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this white just a, we just need a little bit of it I'm going to take a little piece of it and I'm going to wrap it around his neck and then I'm going to needle felt the the head onto the neck and I'm trying to make sure he has a neck. 
it doesn't end up just being like one giant tube. Um, and as I go through and just needle felt right through the head down into the body. And just like all the other pieces, they, they connect to one another, those fibers, uh, those follicles and those fibers um, felt together. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also paying attention to what I think is the best side that will be the front of my, will be the face and the front of my raccoon. And you can still, when you're doing these, uh, these other steps, you can still be um, the, the, uh, in the uh, helpful information. Uh, felting things can look pretty strange until they're finished because it is the finishing step where you put all the time and effort into making it look uh, exactly the way you want it to. Uh, it is just, just a lot of stabbing. Okay. Hey, do you find it to be a little bit like stress relieving a little bit to stab a ball of wool over and over and over again? Cause I feel like I would find that to be stress relieving. It is, it is. I mean, as, as much as we are kind of rushing through this, this is, can be such an uh, exercise in stress relief. You're not rushing, you're just relaxing and stabbing and I do I can do it while I watch television I do stab myself more when I do that but you can you can just sit here and as it takes as things start to come to, to the shape that you want them and as you start to see the the thing that you've envisioned whatever that is um, you know it's it's so gratifying um, but it's it's up to you how how much you want to do it but it should be relaxing um, it, it definitely uh, is something, art is something that should make you feel good and it should be an outlet for your mind to think about other things. Um, you know, thinking about this raccoon and, and thinking about you learning this new skill um, could take your mind off of other things. Um, so the next step we're going to have is we're going to take this gray and I don't know if this is the same gray or different gray than what you have, but I, I just, it's what I picked up. So I'm gonna take the gray um, and I'm gonna make his coat. And his coat is gonna cover his head, uh, not his face, his head and the back and sides of his body. So I have to make it big enough to do that. I think there's a picture in the tutorial of what he, what it looks like. This is for now on, I'm on page three of the tutorial. So I've got his body and now I'm, I'm giving him his, giving him his coat, which looks like kind of like a great big wig. Um, but I'm going to now push and felt this onto his, onto his body. And once again, um, if we were making this um, with, uh, if I had spent more time, um, you know, his body would be smaller and tighter and certainly you can do that. Um, if you keep, uh, if you don't do this part, you can watch the video and see that I'm adding the gray and you can make all the body parts and add the gray, um, later when you feel like you're ready to add the gray. So I don't feel like you absolutely have to do this right now, um, just because I'm doing it for our, for our class. 
And so now I've got this big bunch of wool and I'm just gonna oops, keep stabbing. And now because I'm working with a bigger piece, I'm gonna use the mat underneath me to make it go faster. And I'm not gonna stab myself. I'm just stabbing into this pad. Pulling the pieces and stabbing and pulling and stabbing. And I'm watching to see if I have any bare spots like they have here. There's a bare spot on this head. So I'm going to pull some yarn over there. I may need to add some yarn uh, or wool. I may need to add some wool over that in the end so that um, he, uh, so he isn't bald. And I'm still keeping that bottom flat. And his sides of his body, um, you can play around with that, you know, what you want that to look like. Um, when his arms are gonna go and legs are gonna go cover it but um, I want his belly to be white. So I'm just gonna leave this open space around the outside uh, as I push this um, in here. And once again, this is not as tight. Uh, it, it, you can use the larger needle to get it uh, part of the where, way that you want it. And then you can really spend a lot of time poking it with the uh, thinner needle. Um, what's called, what has the larger gauge uh, needle, finer gauge, and um, really make this um, a tighter felt and also working on these edges to make them um, more defined. Like you can see the difference, see how, see how I've got, you know, this guy, this one here, he, he was, so he's finished, just so he was, I used, you know, um, I spent more time making him smaller. I spent more time with the small needle, making those edges really push into the, um, into the body so that it doesn't just look like a bunch of wool. Like this has, this is a little bit like, you know, he's wearing a, uh, uh, it's not part of his body. Like he's, he looks a little bit like he's wearing a wool sweater. Um, but uh, that is all part of the finishing process. I think when you see things that are, commercially made out, out there and they're very inexpensive. Um, and, and you could do this too, you know, if you wanted to make things and you didn't want to spend a ton of time and you wanted to make things for friends um, or relatives and, and you just wanted to give them something cute, you can do uh, things with this where you leave it kind of rough and, and puffy and it still can be really cute. It all is up to you what you want to do um, and how uh, tight you want to felt it. Because um, I've seen all different styles. And obviously, because they sell that stuff online so cheap, um, they really haven't spent um, an extreme amount of time um, with the design and making the design look um, as, per, you know, as finished as possible. Um, okay, so now, um, just because we're gonna need to move on. So I have my body, um, and he's wearing his coat. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a snout, and that's his nose. That, I mean, that's part of his nose. He's gonna have a little tiny black nose, but he's gonna have this little snout here. So I'm gonna take my white, should be like, I don't need any more white after this. I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna fold it in on itself like I did, just make this little ball. And let's see how that's gonna be way too big. So before I, before I attach it, or I'm gonna felt it a little bit on my pad, before I do that, I make this little ball 
And I know it's gonna get smaller, but I'm seeing if that is gonna fit him. Okay, I think that once this is, once this is felted and this looks like it's the right size for his face. And once again, I'm gonna go back to my pad. This is when we're making one of these smaller elements. We're gonna use the pad because otherwise you will surely stab yourself. And we're gonna just do sort of like we did in the head. We're just gonna continue to make this into a ball. And it's, 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 not quite, um, it's not quite round. It's more like a little bit flat. Um, because you, you can manipulate it and pull it, after we put it on, you can pull it out again to make it like whatever shape because um, you want it to be because probably the, the biggest and most important thing with my raccoon is what is the expression on his face? Is he, is he happy raccoon or is he gonna look like a weirdo? Um, I'm gonna take this like smaller needle and I'm gonna attach it to his face. Just really right at the base, the, the, the bottom, one part of it is right at the neck. So I've got room for his eyes. And I'm gonna push this, keep belting this and pushing this. And you can also do what we did with the neck um, you, it, it, hopefully if you have a leave in, you know, if you had the wool, if you do, I, I hope you have enough based on the design size, but we can put a piece around him. When I'm attaching things, I like to put these pieces, um, I like to wrap the, the attachment sometimes because it hides it better. It makes it uh, blend rather than having that line where the where the snout was attached. It blends better if we put a little bit of uh, extra felt in there. Okay, right and right now, if you look like you think, oh my gosh, that's that that doesn't look anything at all like a finished product. <laughs> it looks like a penguin. It looks like something else. And they all do that. They all look like, like, oh, they're not going to turn out. Um, but it is because you haven't, you know, I haven't done the work. I haven't finished. I haven't, um, I haven't added something where I need to add and I haven't uh, needle felted enough. Um, it isn't something, obviously, that it requires patience. That's the way that I'll put it that way. Okay. So let's say I'm happy with this. I can't really say that I'm totally happy with it, but um, but I've at least put the put the snout on him. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is make his arms and legs. So I'm going to take the black wool. I'm going to take some pieces. You can see this one is this one that has some stuff in it. I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to try to make two equal pieces for the for the arms. We'll start with the arms. So I find that before I before I do anything, I try to start with something that looks like it's about the same amount of wool. That usually really does help to make it be the same size in the end when not, when I'm finished with it. And I'm going to roll just like we did for the body. I'm going to roll this first to make his little arm. And I'm going to stab it. And, and the way we do, I do it, um, I like his legs to be tinier than his, or smaller than his arms. Um, to me, that um, he looks kind of uh, Frankenstein-y if he has his arms and legs are too big and they're like sticking out because once again he's kind of a he's just a fun uh, cute little raccoon. So I'm gonna make this little 
Let's set that aside. So that's an arm. So then I'm going to take the other piece. Do the same thing, but roll it nice and tight. It's about the same size. Hook it. And poke the front of it, the sides of it. Okay, so I've got two that are pretty much the same size. So I'm gonna give him arms. Gonna, uh, I, don't, I don't think I wrapped these ones uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the extra yarn just because they're supposed to look distinct. Other one on. And if you were to do this and you would find out that one of these didn't look right, like, oh, wow, that's like huge. And the other one is does, it doesn't look right. Pull it off and start over again. I'm not gonna do it, but you can just pull that right off and it will, um, and you can make, a, make one that, that you're happy with. So I'm gonna skip him a little, smush him a little. Make him, okay. Can I ask you a question about that? Yep. Um, do you recommend trying to like untangle it and untighten it or just getting a new piece of wool to work with? If you, um, I would not untangle it. No, I would recommend getting a new piece. If you just need to take like a little bit out of it, like, you know, like, oh, he looks a little bit, then maybe that's a little bit, it's very forgiving. But if you tried to like really redo it and you uh, tried to unwind something that you've folded and it, 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 it's not, it's not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. Um, and then my, my feet on this guy are not as, they're not exactly like the, um, I'm just going to roll them into balls. They're, they're more small like balls. They're not, they don't stick out like arms. I mean, I, I think he, he looks kind of like he's going to hug you. <laughs> with his arms sticking out a little bit, but not, he doesn't need his feet sticking out. It's almost like he's, cause he's sitting down. I was like, well, maybe he's sitting on part of his legs. So he doesn't need to have such big legs that you can see. Trisha, are you there? I am. What's up? Do I need to be finished in an hour? No, you do not. Um, my next uh, virtual class starts at two. So if you guys want to hang on and keep stabbing wool for a little while longer, feel free. Okay. I'll tell you. I, I just want to, I'm rushing because I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I have to do this in an hour. And, and now I can relax a li just a little bit. I mean, if one of you needs to leave, um, that's okay. Um, I just want to make sure because I'm I'm normally not rushing like this. I'm much more chatty, as Trisha could tell you. I never shut up. <laughs> it's um, true. Also, I'm. You're the same. Yeah. I also talk constantly, which is why I'm muting myself because you know, I'm sitting here working, talking to myself. <laughs> We're both, the Trisha and I are both very constrained on this call. This is, this is not the, the uh, gregarious energy that we normally um, have in a, in a space with other people that are makers. <laughs> um, 
So I'm gonna put his feet on here. And I will stay on the call after and 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 basically just keep felting my thing till I get it to better um, after we've gone through all the steps. And then if you have questions or you know as you're working, you can either stay on the call or or finish and and look at it later if you want to. Okay, so he he's he's still in. He's getting there. He's, he's huge. It's a little bit on the enormous side for me, but um, but he looks um, at least he's proportional. I think he's so adorable. He has, They're so cute. Has his um, has his arms and legs, and um, and he's starting to take take his fine. You know, he's more looking more like a raccoon. Um, so the next part, after we do the arms and legs, attach them, we're going to make the tail. And I'm gonna make the tail out of gray, the beginning part of the tail out of gray. So like, how big the tail should he have? That's pretty, that's pretty good. So I'm folding this, um, I just took the piece like this and then I'm just folding it over because I want it to be longer and thinner. And I'm gonna to um, make this uh, um, into the shape that I want by needling it. And you can feel when you do this, it starts to um, stick into the, it actually sticks to the pad, but that's okay. This, you just don't, you just want to just keep kind of picking it up and turning it. And I'm taking that piece and making it thinner, tail like. I'll leave this end a little fluffy because uh, that's the end I'm going to attach to the body. And I'm going to try to make this end a little more pointed. That's the part that um, could be the end. Look more like a tail, not so much also like a beaver tail. Um, then I'm going to take my black because this is going to be the stripes for my tail. And I'm going to get a piece, take out these other white pieces that got mixed in here. And I'm going to kind of roll this a little bit to make this long, like almost like a piece of yarn. Um, whatever length you want to make it or whatever width you want to make it i'm going to take this and wrap it around the tail and i don't want it to be too thick so i'm going to just pull it and make it so it's going to start at the bottom it's going to be like a candy cane then it's going to roll i don't want it too thick and i just keep pulling that so it's not too thick and i'm going to wrap it around uh, to make his tail. So this is what his tail looks like when it, oh, no, this one I didn't do it that way. This one I did him as rings. Uh, let's see, I've done these both. Let's do the rings. So what are the rings? I can't remember. I think the raccoon does have rings instead of, a, instead of the candy cane tail. So we'll just take a piece, cut it there. I just pulled it apart, I think, cut it. And that's one ring.
trying to make the uh, markings of his tail somewhat distinct by pulling these little fibers, pulling them over these little edges, just pulling them and pushing them in so they look like stripes instead of like this, like all, all um, just blended in. Um, okay, so that's one, one stripe. So pull some yarn out to make another stripe. I think I'm gonna make three stripes for mine. I'm just gonna pull that down there. So it's not, I'm not entirely happy with it, but I'm, it's good enough to, to put out, to add onto his body. Then I'm just gonna put it at the very base of his backside. And those loose pieces I left. It would be fun when everyone's finished if you took a picture of it and posted them on your, if you have Instagram and tag Handmade Arcade and Art Smith's P. Is it Art Smith's PGH or Instagram? Tag? Yeah, Art Smith's PGH is our Instagram. And we're Handmade Arcade, just all one word. And, that, and we had some folks from the um, who did the mosaics class with the um, Pittsburgh Glass Center last week do that. And it was a lot of fun to see uh, their finished products. Yes, even when I've made them. Um, where I've, you know, um, done them the way I, the way I wanted them, where I want, really thought they would look alike. They all kind of look different. They, they end up with different looks on expressions on their face and, and you can also play around with that. It's fun to see, I mean, when you're art, when you're all together in a class, this would normally be, if I was gonna schedule this class in our classroom, um, it would normally be three hours long <laughs> to allow for plenty of time um, and relaxation and chat, chatting. Um, and when I do the, um, I'll probably, uh, Trisha, redo the video at some, some point, not that long from here and do like, I'll stop it um, for work time. And then when you watch it, uh, you could stop it too and go back and um, so that I can get it to look the way that I want it to look. Okay, so he has a little bit off center. Move that over. Okay, so he has a, a body, um, arms, legs, and a tail. So now, we're going to work on his ears. His ears are next. Um, so we're going to take the gray, take that 
take two bunches of gray, pretty, pretty equal. I'm gonna make the ears. So I make the ears, the way I do this is I roll them, I flatten them with my fingers and then roll them, pinch them and roll them. And so in the end, it looks like relatively um, flat on the top. I mean, from top to bottom, but it looks like, like a little swirly circle. It's not round, it's, it's flat, but it's like a little swirly circle. And I'm gonna do that with both of these. Um, this is, when you get to the face, and we're doing these like the, the eyes and the ears, um, and you really, you really are trying to uh, not have them be disproportionate. So, and it doesn't take that much for them to look off. So I'm gonna work with these two pieces. Two get two little swirlies that are the same size. Okay, well, I can work with this. Okay, so then I'm going to felt them. I keep pulling from the edges, using my needle to pull from the edges and I'm felt them right onto this pad because I'm, I want them to be fairly flat, like discs. That's uh, how I, for this particular thing. Also, um, I want them to have like a little bit of a flatter bottom where I'm gonna attach them to the head. So they're gonna look like they're, they're gonna have that sort of triangular, they're rounded at the top, but they're flat at the bottom where I'm gonna put them on the head. And let me just pull this off here and get a sense of how this proportionate this is. So th this is kind of big, his, his ears a little bit big for his head. So I'm just gonna keep working on it to make it smaller by pulling the edges. The only thing with this I would say is if, if, if I wasn't doing the class and if I was you guys, I wouldn't add the ears and the face. Um, I would probably not, I wouldn't probably add any of the body parts obviously until I was really happy with the size of the body and the main, you know, how thick it is because these arms and legs are proportioned for this relatively big fluffy raccoon and if you are happy with that then that works fine but um you know his ears if i make him smaller his ears would be too big so just to to, to say that if if you decide that you um want to keep working on your body or any of your other pieces okay, that's why we do it the way we do it where like you make all the different parts uh, separately, you know, add them together. Um, really, the the body parts are added at the end when you're happy with your with your body. And if you have added any of them now, because we're we're doing the class, um, you can always just pull them off and uh, wait until you're ready. So my ears, okay. So my ears are pretty um, relatively okay. And then the other thing that I do with this um, particular thing is that I'm gonna give his ears these little white inserts and they're pretty small. So you're not gonna need very much, um, very much wool at all. And I'm gonna push that into the middle of his ear, the inside of his ear. A 
that in there. This one. And put that in my ear. Then I'm going to do what I did with all of them, um, all the body parts. I'm going to felt those ears onto his head. So they're facing forward, they're sticking up. And they are placed about uh, a half an inch apart. They're not too far on the side and yet they're not too super close together. Um, see in the finished this smaller piece that there is a space there in the middle um, and you can uh, if you look at the difference here like once once you have them um, attached you can still stab them and shape them so if I wanted these to be more pointy um, I could just even push it with my fingers get a little get them to look a little more pointy or the reverse, if I wanted them to be rounded, I just manipulate that a little with my hands. I'll put them on there. And then I'll put the other one on there. And you could add some more. Uh, once again, you're adding a piece. So if you if you feel like it's um, it needs a little bit more at the attachment point, and just add a little bit of wool there, and then press it into both, and it will help attach it. Okay. So here he is so far, he's starting, starting to look like a raccoon. Um, so one of the steps I think that we, that I skipped when we were making the, putting the, um, putting the uh, coat on, the, the gray coat, is that we didn't give him his, uh, the point that we give him on the, on the front of his head. So I just, I take a piece, um, a small piece of gray, and I'm going to add this gray. I'm going to see how it kind of looks like, I don't know what that looks like, a V. I'm going to give him like this V that where the V part is on his forehead. And I'm going to add that to him and I can, even though there's all this wool up here, I can just add that around the ears and give him this little point that, he, that like makes his face look more like a raccoon. Let's see that. And once again, I think this needs a little more Just a little more. That gray is pretty, pretty light. I'm gonna just add a little bit more there to that. Okay. So it's pretty fuzzy, but um, at least he's. So it's starting to look like the raccoon. Now this is the part we're going to add his eyes and this is the part that he, the patches behind his eyes where he's really going to come to look like the raccoon. So um, so I'm going to take my black and I'm going to make the patches for his eyes. Take that, and I'm gonna figure, I'm gonna do that 
that thing that I did for the ears. I'm going to kind of spin it in my hand. Only instead of making a disc, I'm going to make it a little bit of an oval. I'm going to see if that is going to, when it's finished, does that look like it's going to be right the, about the right size? And it does. So do the same thing with another piece. These look about the same. That's going to be a patchwork size. Okay. So you make them into the oval. That's the shape of his face is kind of, um, I like when they, I like that they come down on the side of his face. They're not just circles underneath, like patches. It's, it, this is part of like shaping this around his, around his nose gives him a little bit of a cuter raccoon face. Make those patches. And I could keep doing this um, until they get smaller, um, but that's pretty close. I'm gonna lay that alongside of his um, snout. And I think that size is gonna, it's got white all the way around and you, it's up against his face. I think that's gonna be cute. So I think that's a good size. And then here's my other one. I don't know what I did with my other. I already had the other one measured out, but somehow I must have dropped it. So we'll just make another one. Make this about the same size. Then, oh, here it is, it's stuck to the raccoon. Then I'm gonna attach this to his face. And I'm not gonna use any extra. I'm just gonna pull the loose strands from the black, keep the different colors of the yarn separated. Back the gray, and so he has these patches. And then I'm going to do that with this one. See if they look like they're about the same size. Okay, so I can see here that my size is going to get those those eye patches to kind of look as much the same as possible and you can still manipulate this by pulling the edges. I'd like it to be sort of, I guess, a little teardrop shape, like a little bit smaller at the top. And the bottom. So I'm going to pull those edges in. Okay. So so I have um I have all the pieces except for his nose and the final pieces of his eyes. Let 
And I'm not quite happy with the symmetry of his face, but I can work on that later. Okay, so um, then we need a nose, which is really small piece, kind of like we did for the center of the ears. Don't want him to have a really big nose. And if I, if I feel like he's too flat, I can shape that with my hands to kind of pull it out, give him a little bit more of a nose, like his snout to give him a little bit more of the shape there. And then see like that's too big. So I wanna make his nose even smaller than that. And I'm gonna give him his nose. So let's make his nose a little better. Attach it. And this particular shape of nose, it does look pretty cute if it's kind of like a little triangle, but I don't know if I can do that real fast here. I'll just put it on there. Okay. Okay, you have about 10 more minutes. Got it. Okay, so the last, this is the very last step, which is putting in the eyes. When I um, gave you the eyes, um, they are just, they give him a little bit of expression and um, you're going to, they make eyes um, for uh, all kinds of uh, dolls and felted things. They make them in all different sizes. Uh, these are two millimeter, uh, they're very small. I gave you a bunch in the kits to make sure that you would uh, have them if you dropped one or you lost one and that you would have them in the same size. So I want to make sure that my eyes are the same size. Um, and it helps to um, make the hole where the eyes are going to go first. And you just stab in there where we're going to, even if you go all the way through to the back, it's okay because you can always repair it, but you're gonna set where those eyes are gonna go. And then you test them out by pushing them in to where the hole, where you just made that hole and you haven't glued them yet. And the idea is to get them to sit um, close enough inside there so they're not bulging um they you you know if you if you don't get them pushed in far enough he looks kind of googly eyed um and that's you know every character that you make is different i mean the the, the raccoon because he has the black patches in the back it's probably not as noticeable but other animals when you do their eyes you you, you know you want to make sure that they don't look too uh goofy Okay, so we have gone through all of the instructions. I'm going to stop talking for the next few minutes and set this down and ask, I don't know where each of you is. Maybe you could just tell me where you are in the process and if you have any questions. Emily, you want to start? Sure. I'm basically attaching body parts and trying well i'm first trying to get the body parts to like the right scale size mm -hmm. and then it's and then starting to attach them okay are you is there anything that you don't understand about i mean i know you're probably because we went quickly at the end you'll have to go back but is there anything that you want to ask while i have you no i think it all makes sense. I'm having, I think I made my body a little bit too big in proportion to the head. So I just, I'm just trying to work to get the body down. Um, you, you can get the body down or you can also increase the size of the head. I don't have any more of the white though. I think oh. I put too, it's okay though. I think I can, if I fiddle with it as, as long as I get the body down a little bit, it'll be okay. It's amazing 
how much smaller these could be if I just kept needle felting them. So you definitely can make that body smaller. Good, okay, if you have any questions uh, later on, feel free to email me. Thank you. Um, I, I, Jackie, how are you doing? Doing okay. Um, did you say you glue the eyes in? Mm -hmm. What the last of? step? What I I didn't show that. The last step is to put just a little bit of craft glue or any kind of glue on the um, on the eye itself, sure. not on the felt, but on the eye, and then just stick it in there after you know making. Oh, yeah. if I, I've, I'm happy with where they are now. I like the way I've got my hole. I put glue on the end of the eye and then I finally place it in there. And when you do that and just let it dry, those fibers will stick to the eye um, and it'll stay in there. I mean, these are obviously not toys. So they, they, you know, if your cat or dog gets a hold of them or your kids get a hold of them, um, they're toast. Yeah, my three-year-old loves raccoons and wants to know, can he have one? Can he yes. have it? I'm like, no, absolutely not. But we could put it on our Christmas tree. What would be a good way to attach uh, something to hang it as an ornament? I would just um, take a piece of thread or um, embroidery thread, like, or a piece of um, twine or something, whatever you want to use, and I would sew it. Just pull one piece through the head, just go right through one side, and then tie it at the top. Um, you could do it with, I, I don't think I would use ribbon, but you know, some kind of twine or thread or even a, you know, a couple strands of embroidery thread. Um, just put them through the, a needle and then wind it, you know, cut, go through the top of his head. Okay. And he'll hang um, nicely. The kids really love these. I mean, the, when we have the anything felted like sitting on the counter at the store, yeah, all the kids want them, and I and I'm always like, okay, that's not going to last very long if you're if you're a child is holding it. They're not made for that. Right. Um, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, I don't think so. Good. Yeah. So why don't you go wear your BDA shirt? Rachel, what about you? How are you? Well, I'm not. Um, I'm just busy trying to make the body parts a little smaller. Um. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I haven't added the body parts. I just added the little the cloak thing. So good. Well, you look like you're pretty. Like everything is going pretty well in terms of your scale. Yeah, but I think he's, I was hoping he'd be a little more rounder. He's a bit like tall. <laughs> he's tall. Well, um, why don't you you can take if you feel that way, you can always um, push him this mm -hmm. way with your hands and felt. And he will change shape. He will get fatter. Um, and you can also, do you have more, you have more wool? Um, you have gray? Yeah, I do have gray. Because the, the white, um, you don't need, I mean, the white is the underbody. Mm -hmm. So it's really the, if you want to um, make him like wider in his body, just add gray keep putting it around his, where the gray goes and he'll get fatter. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jennifer, I don't know if you're there, or if you're just listening or if you're just following along. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I, he's coming along. Oh, good. Very good. So you heard my suggestion to Rachel. If you feel like he, he, he's fine, but if he's too, he's pretty long. He is. Uh, if you want to squish him, you know, down and, and put, make him fatter, you, know, you can do that with the needling. It's, it's so amazing how, uh, how much you can change by just continuing to needle. But he, he looks good. He's cute. I can't really hear you. I have one arm and no appendages at the moment. Okay. Well, that's, you know, if you have any problems with that, uh, just let me know. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, uh, Trisha, are we done? 
Uh, just for time. I mean, I would be happy to hang out with you guys, but I think we need to, she needs to get ready for the next class. Yeah, I do. But I really think this was great. And all of your, oh my gosh, Jackie, that raccoon is so cute. <laughs> They're so adorable. Yay. <laughs> Yay. You guys, I'm so excited. Please, please, please put these on Instagram if you have an account and tag us or on Facebook and tag, and tag us. Um, I really would like to see them when they're finished. Thank you. I am going to sign off. Um, okay. And if, if anyone has anything they want to um, put on our, like if you got a kit, if you have anything you want to tell me about the kit that we can improve or the instructions, please do that as well. I think this was great. And um, I will get this video processed um, as soon as I can and get it online if you need to come back to it. And thank you, Kate, for, for teaching this with us today. And thank you all for your time. It was really great. They're so stinking cute. Oh, I should show you. Wait, I have, um, I have this little penguin that Kate that's oh. next to me that Kate gave me last year for Christmas that I just love. <laughs> you can make so many things, guys. It, yep. This is like, this is just one technique, but um, it's really infinite. They're really, so I think they're, they're just so cute. So anyway, have fun. all right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest Happy. of the day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. Happy holidays. Holidays. Don't forget to shop. We only have a two more days left and enter the raffle. Try to win a basket. Check out Handmade Arcade Virtual Market. And um, if you miss it and you don't get it, didn't get something, go to the Artsmiths. They have even more stuff that we don't have on our marketplace. So have a wonderful day. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.